Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. Today is May 19th, 2014. It's a Monday. It's a Monday before Labor Day. And hopefully you guys can get inspired to do something for Memorial Day, for the weekend. Make something new. And it doesn't matter even if you're not going anywhere. Make something new and have your own little party. That's what I'm going to do. All right, so we're going to start off traditionally questions and answers. And that means it's you guys' turn to hit it. I, I do want to say a couple things before we start, just to catch everything up, because I got back from Boston last night. What a great, it was so great. We saw so many ladies. We had a one day on Sunday. We had a three-day workshop on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We had so much fun. So those of you who are listening, we had such a great time. It was just, I'm telling you, those workshops are just my favorite thing to do, because it's not a lot as it's not as much fun to stand in front of this little camera thing as it is to go talk to everybody and I really like to interact and talk and we had we had a lot of fun alright so now we do questions I'm making Max's jacket that's pattern number 1950 and size 5W this is my first silhouette project well that's interesting you probably should have stuck with 195 first but that's okay Will the same size 5W be what I need for tops and blouses, future products? That's a good question across the board. So do I always use the same size? I don't, I don't think so. Generally, yes. But as fabrics change, as our occasions that we're going to change, then we're going to change the size. But generally, yes, the reason you picked that 5W was because that's how many inches you liked in your finished jacket so another jacket might be the exact same it might be close as a guide yes but keep in mind that you might be using a different fabric and that may make a change or you might be wearing it to a different event and that may change etc cetera, etc cetera. but overall generally they all come off the same base so yes you would use the same size okay hope that helps tonight we'll talk a little bit about that in our webcast how do your educational DVDs compare to the Fit to Stitch episodes? That's a really good question. Um, the educational DVDs were created to be in-depth. I think to be created in-depth. So, you know, when you're doing a DVD and, and you're not limited to time, then you can really focus on whatever subject you want. The PBS shows, why well, I think in many ways they're better I am limited to 20 minutes 24 minutes in that presentation but I've got five cameras I've got you know all kinds of advantages that I don't have when you film a DVD so I would say in general I think the DVDs are deeper in content but I think the PBS shows skim um, and I say skim but they go they cover a lot of topics that don't need more in-depth information. Is that fair? Um, one PBS show we just did was um, Lace. I mean, I wouldn't do a whole DVD on Lace because I don't need a whole DVD. So it's a topic that I can cover on a PBS show and not need as much depth, if that makes sense. I hope that helps. I think that's the difference. More depth, if there are more depth issues, I'm going to do a DVD because I feel like um, we need more time than just a PBS will allow. All right, hopefully that'll help you. Okay. Sophia's knit, it's not a summer weight or a winter weight. It is a knit, it is made by Logan Tex. Logan Tex is a company that is it's that wholesales fabrics for the most part they wholesale fabrics and they buy fabrics and put their or make fabrics and put their name on them they they label their name so that that name is exclusive to their brand Sophia knit is a Pontaroma knit but Sophia because it's named Sophia means it comes from Logan Tex Logan Tex is the only makers of Sophia because they named it Sophia um, it is a little lighter than a lot of Pontaroma knits, so some people feel like it's a summer weight. I don't think it is. I think it's meant to be all year round. It is just lighter weight than many of the other Pontaromas that are out there. Okay? And Sophia knit 
Uh, Vogue Fabrics has carry Sophia knit. They carry a, a nice line of colors. Some women love it because it's lighter weight. Other women don't like it because it's lighter weight. Um, but sh but you should know about it either way. So check it out and just know that it's nice. It's good quality. Uh, Vogue always runs really good pricing on it. So hopefully that helps. All right. On 909, I fused the whole garment linen. Is it best to still line? That's a really good question. Um, fusing and interfacing have two different roles. Nope, that fusing is interfacing, sorry. Fusing and lining have two different roles. If I fuse a garment, I'm trying to change the hand of the fabric. So if I fuse linen, I'm trying to retard the wrinkling. And I'm fusing it to retard the wrinkling. Or I'm trying to stabilize something that's loosely woven, or I'm trying to add more body to something that's really lightweight if I'm going to make a jacket out of it. So that's my purpose of fusing. Lining is a finishing technique. There's two finishing techniques that are used most commonly. One is surging and one is lining. So I don't have to ever, I mean, I, I just really should choose one. I mean, I don't have to choose either one of those finishing techniques, but generally um, in a pattern, we use one of those two. We either line the garment or we surge the garment. So it would be kind of like saying, well, since I ate spaghetti, should I not drink my milk? They're just so unrelated that I, I realize why we put them together is because they're on the same garment. But fusing the garment, again, is changing the hand of the fabric. Lining is a finishing. I don't ever have to line anything if I don't want to. It's your choice. Li what lining does is it helps slip, it helps the garment slip on. It helps me get that garment on and off, you know, rather easily. And because of that, it cuts down on wear and tear on the garment, and the garment has a tendency to last longer because it's lined. A interfacing, fusible interfacing doesn't do any of that. All right, does that help? Hopefully that helps. Would you consider doing a show on relining jackets? Relining? Clarify that question for me. Oh, um, you know, see now, you guys, when you ever ask a question, if you, it helps for me to have a dialogue, and that's one reason I love, because I learned so much when I communicate with you all. To me, I would cut out the old lining, trace it, and just put it right back in. So I don't know what you would need to know I don't find it challenging enough to warrant doing a topic on it. But if you are more specific to me, you can email me about what specifically you find to be difficult or a problem. Then it would give me a heads up. But like I said, I would just, if I was relining something, I'd take out the old, cut the pattern, put it back in. Um, so yeah, I think you get my point. If you could just be more specific. And like I said, you can just email me. Was the front of the polka polka top double or lined? Polka polka top double or lined? No, no, the front, no, it's not here, sorry. Um, the polka top was not double, it was a single layer. It was the back lace that was double layer, not completely the whole thing, but it was overlapped, eight inches in the back. But no, the front of the top was just a single layer. It's an ITY knit. So you really don't need a double layer on that. And that polka polka fabric's all gone. Some of you have ordered it and I I haven't gotten we haven't gotten to shipping or telling you it's gone, so some of it's gone, sorry. Um, if I raise the underarm of the bodice If I raise the underarm of the bodice, be, sorry you guys, sometimes it takes me a while to read that question and digest it. If I raise the underarm of the bodice because it is too low for me, how do I adjust the sleeve? I got it. Okay, so if you want to take, um, if it's a, if it's a non-silhouette pattern, I would sew the sleeve in to make sure the sleeve fits into the armhole. You can trust me that my sleeves fit into the armholes. Okay, so let's just look at this for a minute, and let's look at this for a minute because these two go together. So. I understand the question to be is I'm going to raise this armhole because it's too low. So I'm going to use a number and the only reason I'm going to use a number is so that you kind of get the relevance between the two. 
if I raise this up, I'm going to say an inch, then I have shortened the depth of the armhole. And when I've shortened the depth of the armhole, I have to shorten the cap height. The cap height of the sleeve and the depth of the armhole are the same. So this portion of the sleeve, if you notice right in here, aligns. It's, it's a one-to-one, -one, there's no changes to it. Then the depth of the armhole matches the cap height. So I have shortened the depth of the armhole by one inch, and that's the front and the back. So I'm going to shorten the cap height by one inch. But if I'm going to make a tuck, I only do a little half inch tuck. So a one half inch tuck will equal the one inch that I took it away. And then because you always get that little um, uneven part right there, you take your fringe curve and you put it up at the notch at the top and you put it at the notch there and you draw in the difference. And usually the difference will be will cut that little unevenness right in half. It'll it'll go through the middle of that little uneven part. So you're going to go from this notch up to the top and you'll just redraw that. If you didn't redraw it accurately, it's in the seam allowance so it wouldn't make a difference. Um, so I don't want you to sweat the small stuff. But generally, it's good French curve practice to just lay your French curve on there and redraw that at the top. So again, whatever I'm shortening my armhole by, I would shorten my cap height by that same amount. The only thing I would caution you, and like this weekend, or this last week in Boston when we were going through all of this and making sure everybody understood it, the math really threw people. And I think because they were just kind of, I don't know, I'm not sure why. We got it, but again, if I take this up an inch, I shorten the cap height an inch. Just don't think front and back. Just think, I mean, you got to do it to the front and the back, but just think an inch in the front, inch in the back. And because this is the front and the back, it automatically takes care of an inch in the front and an inch in the back. So don't take out an inch because it's a fold. Take half of that, which is my half inch. So a little half inch tuck across the cap height. Just make sure the relationship is correct before I do all these changes and then it doesn't work and then I wonder what have I done or what was wrong with this pattern, etc, etc. And again, we've talked about this many times but I'm going to keep saying it because once you've done that and you've got that armhole where you want it to be, you should make a template out of that or you should have a pattern tissue of it. So I can lay that armhole on anything I want, if it's a t-shirt, whatever it is, and I can use the same sleeve over and over. All right? Okay. On Sally's pants, I can't figure out which dart lines are mine. Please help. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Darts are um, darts are, are fine tuning points. If I were making Sally's pants, I would, uh, you know, make a muslin first. But when I made that muslin, I would just drape in the darts. I mean, you could stitch them first, but you know, it, it's if I'm going to make a pattern and I'm going to make a pattern. Let's say I'm going to make a pants pattern for 100,000 women, which is basically what we're dealing with here. 100,000 women, I'm going to make one pattern for those 100,000 women. What are the chance that I get those darts exactly right for pick a number? You know, I mean, I, when we offer that pattern out there, you have to recognize, and I'm learning this more and more, that you all think that there's no changes allowed. You know, you're not allowed to do this. I need you to change that pattern. I need you to tweak those darts. Everybody's hip to waist is a little bit different. So it doesn't matter which lines. I mean, pick two. But then what I'm saying to you is you should expect to change them. Every single time I make Sally's pants, when I, and I tell everybody, when you go to put it on and when you, um, before you put the waistband on, you should be looking to tweak and you should be looking to tweak those darts probably not the side seams but you should look to tweak those darts so in the big picture don't worry about those darts and I know that's so contrary to what we've been taught but um, let's move ahead alright okay on Sally's pants 3200 alright this is a little bit longer question we'll get through it <laughs> Okay, I've been watching the old webcast. In one, you say that if the muslin is made of a woven and fits well, then when made of a knit, it will fit. But in another webcast, 
you say to make the muslin out of the appropriate fabric. All right, so the one that I say that if I make it out of a woven, the knit will fit well, that's the one you should disregard. So either I didn't have an edit crew or nobody caught me, but that's wrong. So I'm apologizing. Um, if you're going to make a knit garment, you should make a stretch muslin. And the stretch should be similar. So I can't if I'm going to make a t-shirt, I can't use a woven fabric. It, it would completely null and void that. That's the, that's the answer that's right. If I'm going to make a, a pair of stretch pants, I can't make a woven muslin. That's not going to work. There's too many angles that change. The circumference changes, but the angles change also. Okay, sorry. Okay. The polka dot knit is out, yeah. It's all gone. We we put 20 new fabrics up last week and over half of them are gone. I mean, we'll, we've got more up and we're putting more up, so that's the good news. We put some more up today and we'll put some more we'll be putting more up all week long. So just kind of watch. The good news is the fabric's doing really well. The bad news is the fabric's doing really well. <laughs> and so we we love it. I mean, we're really grateful, but we're also happy because we can get you great fabrics. I mean, the fabrics from New York, they're, they're in my opinion, worth way more than what we charge. And obviously, at the rate they're selling, you all think so too. But I want to keep them low. I want to, um, you know, turn them quick, and that way you get fresh new fabrics. And it's exciting. It's really exciting for all of us. Okay, so this will be our last question. When color blocking a t-shirt across the chest, is it best to split the pattern just at the underarm seam? No. No. Um, I'm going to give you some numbers. You look at Dana's top, number 150. Jocelyn's, number 210. Um, Sonia's blouse, number 575. All of those, right off the top of my head, have yokes to them. I don't think I have any of them back here. I don't. All of them have yokes to them, and, and none of them, most of them are right around the notch area, the notch of the armhole. If you go to the underarm, it's too low. It's really too low. It is a one to three. If you measure it from shoulder to waist, it's actually a one to three is the ratio that most of the time is used. And so, um, it's about five inches, six inches, somewhere right around there, to um, to the waist. So you're much better off to use that notch as a nice area to draw a yoke through if you decide you want to make a yoke. Okay, does that help? All right, are we good? Okay. All right. So I want to do. There's lots of things I want to do tonight, and I I think we're gonna have fun. <laughs> But I always think we're going to have fun, and um, I appreciate you guys watching and live viewing and all that other stuff. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is kind of go over Craig's blouse. Craig's blouse is pattern number 425, and it's our pattern of the month. So the first thing I want to do is tell you a little bit of background as to why I created a pattern, because for many times, um, I'm, this is the original on the front, and I just love this blouse. Craig Taylor is the designer that I copied this from. Um, Craig Taylor is a basically just does women's blouses. Beautiful line of blouses. They're at Neiman's. That's where I see them a lot. Um, it would help you to just Google them, and you could really see a lot of really beautiful, but not just are they beautiful, the stitching, the quality, um, the linings inside, the way he makes, I don't mean linings, but facings, the way he makes them, it's just really nice. I mean, he, and he has come to Neiman's a couple times, and I've gone to meet him simply because he's so, he's just, um, his detail, his details are, are really, really incredible, and it's, it's fun, it's fun to listen to him point out his details, and to hope that people appreciate those details. Um, and so when I copied this blouse, I mean, at least if I was going to copy him, I wanted to at least make sure I appreciated his details, <laughs> which we did. So this blouse and the reason I released this pattern was um, the beautiful collar that it has. It looks beautiful under a blouse, I mean under a jacket, because it's a very small collar, and so it lays flat, or it could go outside if you were wearing a v-neck 
over it. The bus darts have all been moved to the front, so there's gathers up the front. I'm going to cover fitting, I'm going to cover all that in a minute. But also with the sleeve, it is a one piece, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a one piece sleeve, but it's got a placket in it. And I also put a French cuff in this particular pattern. Because um, all of our sleeves are interchangeable from all of our blouses. So 400 can go to 600, can go to 625, can go to 650, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And so now my thought was we would have a French cuff in our repertoire of sleeves so that we could pick that if we wanted to and add that in. The back of the body has no darts because it's real shaped at the side seam. So even though it has no darts in the back, it really shapes well and fits well. It doesn't mean you couldn't add darts, you certainly could. Another reason why I really like this blouse is it it's I oft times I've said to you guys that there is um a linear feel to a pattern and then there's a curved feel to a pattern. This has both combined in one and I really like that. I really liked the appeal because it has the soft gathers of the front and yet it has the linear collar that goes with it. The collar is not curved, which typically, and so there's a wide variety of fabrics that look good in it and I really liked the ability to kind of use almost any kind of fabric in this that you wanted to use. Okay, and so again as we go along, if you have questions about anything that I've said, let me know. Alright, in this particular blouse, I want to just talk about fitting first and how it's made. We take a bust dart, and when we take a bust dart in the bodice, and we cut to but not through a pivot point, and we close up the bust dart, the dart goes to the front. And then what happens is darts, instead of being stitched in the front, they're actually converted to gathers. So anytime you change a dart, then those gathers would be called dart equivalent gathers. Now you don't have to remember all this, I'm just teaching you this so that you can get a bigger picture. Usually when you just have dart equivalent gathers, they're not enough. They're not um, significantly enough to actually gather them, and if you gather them, they really look you know, not enough. So typically when they do gathers on women's ready to wear, the ratio is one and a half to one. So that means if I measured the length of this beforehand, I spread one to, I, I want to spread it half again as large, so that once I gather it back, I have one to one and a half fullness. So once you have dart equivalent gathers, you do additional gathers by simply cutting and opening up. Now, and the only thing I'd want you to keep in mind, and I'm going to show you this for a reason because there's some that I'm going to do for you and then there's others I want you to do on the pattern if you decide you want to. So anytime you slash, wherever the slash goes to, that's where the gathers will go to. So you have to be careful to maybe slash up here or slash down here, wherever you want them to be. You want them to be in the center, but these gathers can really be anywhere up and down along the center that you want. But you also notice as you start to open this up, the front becomes very biased. Okay, so that's how we arrive at the blouse. Um, everything else on the blouse would be the same as 600, um, 675, 650, 350, all those other blouses we've done. Um, Craig's blouse is going to fall into that same size grouping. All right, so I want you know, to me, I always want to show you the base, I want to show you where it comes from, how it is, and then we can talk about all the different variations we can make from that. So the blouse itself, the original, is made for a woven fabric. When I go, the blouse I have on is Craig's blouse. It's made from a knit. So I want to go over the differences that I did here, but before I do that I want to show you another one, because you can probably see this one a little bit better, and it's the same blouse same blouse. I did a few differences. So what I did with this is I decided that I wanted just a little gathered t-shirt in the front and where I got this idea from was Mary lives in Colorado and she had loaned me this blouse and I really liked it and she said oh this is just Terry's blouse number 313 Terry's blouse number 313 but it's got gathers in the front could, we sh could you show us how to do that? So that's exactly how you do it. You simply cut, 
spread now again let's go back to Terry's blouse Terry's top number 313 has a French dart so I'd take that French dart and I'd move it to the front just like I did that and then I would open it up for gathers the, re the differences between these two is this is a shawl collar and in the back of this they've actually spread the collar in the back as well and you could easily do that again one and a half to one so wherever you say gathers gathers equal slashing gathers equal fullness okay so but there was a very simple way to do something like this um, was to simply use Craig's blouse which I did and this little Craig's blouse um, the only change I made is I changed the neckline because the, it has a collar on it I didn't want the collar so I just simply wanted it to come down a little bit so I used my French curve and I laid my French curve on the neckline and you can see there's my new collar I mean there's my new neckline and I'm gonna give you numbers so that you can um, tell I, I went from 21 to 13 so 21 is at center front 13 at the shoulder seam and that was my new neckline okay alright so the other thing that you need to be careful of is here's the pattern when you're doing this um, I don't need the buttonhole closure all I need is center front plus a seam allowance so center front plus a seam allowance is simply I, I, cu I just cut the whole thing out just like it was and then I just cut off everything center fronts marked I cut off everything but 3 8 inch from center front also because remember this is a woven and this is a knit and it's sleeveless watch armhole always kind of like just put a little you know blip on your whatever watch armhole watch armhole because I didn't I wanted to make sure this armhole was high enough because if it has a blouse if it has a sleeve and if it's woven that armhole is probably going to be too low so just be really careful of that and don't do it what I did is I came along with with my sweater set because that's my base let me show you how I did this I used the I didn't use the sleeve because in this case I wasn't so the top is my sweater set the bottom is my Craig's blouse you can see there that the sleeve is higher so I simply extended my side seam up and then cut my sweater set sleeveless armhole that was it you want to align here and you want to align the side seam and there's the differences easy enough so just two changes three changes I did the neckline I took some off center front because I didn't want to add and then I changed the armhole I raised it up because I wanted to make it sleeveless also what you want to be careful to do is I went down a size because I knew I didn't want the ease that's normally in a blouse that's why finished garment numbers are really helpful for you I went ahead and went down a size and I love my blouse tried it on absolutely love it um, I, I put it on with a little I don't know if y'all remember last week we did this little shawl thing and I just really really liked it okay so that's a version of 425 Craig's blouse going from a woven to a knit and it's the same thing I have on so I did the same thing with this one I did uh, same exact thing everything same exact thing change the neckline this neckline's a little bit higher I didn't put it as low but what I did on this one is I decided that I wanted to do these little peekaboo sleeves and I think these are really great for for many of us we don't really want to have sleeveless garments and I like this look and, and this is the look I'm talking about I'll show you this a little bit later this is what I'm talking about which we made last last time it's the sweater set 195 and then you could tie them in a knot you can wear them different ways so when I do a sleeveless I like to have a little something over my shoulders number one because all the air conditioning is so cold in the summertime but number two just in case it does drop in temperature I can have something to slip on but this sleeve is is a, a similar type thing it's just got a little cut out here so I want to show you how to do that um, again I used my knit sleeve so when I raise the armhole same way this is my knit sleeve and if you notice on me if you can see it it's right at my shoulder seam I didn't I didn't there's no sleeve there at all and all you have to do is pick a shape so I picked an oval I didn't use the French curve you know you could measure it you could kinda do whatever you want but there's my little patch <laughs> anyway so I just put that right at the top and I just cut it out so you can see you have this kind of pointed thing coming up and you have this 
pointed thing coming up. So then what I did is I surged this raw edge. Once I cut that away, I turned it under, I hemmed it, and then I did not set the sleeve in. I set the sleeve in with the side seam closed. So I made the whole blouse, I finished the whole blouse, all I had was the sleeves open, and I set the sleeve in because your sleeve isn't connected up here. It's just like a, you know, once you sew this tube, it's like a U-shaped thing. So it's not difficult to set in because there's nothing to ease in because you got this big gaping hole up here. But um, you, you really can't do it flat anymore because there's nothing across the top. And then, I, and then you just hem this little portion right here. This is all finished. I finished this beforehand, and then you just finish this little section right here. And I, again, I just top stitched all of it. Okay, so I wanted to show you that little peekaboo sleeve. All right, any questions on that? We're good to go? Okay, so then I did this one because tonight we're talking about different fabrics, border prints, specialty fabrics, panel fabrics, and all of my sewing life, I don't know what it is, but I've just really always been attracted to specialty fabrics. If it's weird, the weirder it is, the more I like it, and I guess that's reflective of my personality. But I just love weird fabrics. And as long as I like the colors, they just present such a challenge. Now, I can certainly understand that if you're challenged with a fit, then gosh, you don't want to tackle anything at one time. But now that you all are getting this fit and you're really progressing well, yesterday it was so much fun to go to a group of women who were webcast watchers and they followed along and they really got it. We could just go so much farther once you get that whole fit thing down. Then it's fun too. The fabrics to me are what it's all about. Fit is something we should have known, if that makes sense. So the fabrics really, for me, that's kind of what it's all about when I'm making the garment. So in this particular case, this is um, Geo Evening Geo Delight is the name of this fabric. We've got it online, and it comes in panels. So I bought, I, I bought, I cut off two panels, um, and because it's such a weird, it has a stripe. You know, the panel is kind of odd, just geometrics, and then it has a stripe that separates one panel from another. So I put the stripe over here and then I put the different uh, shapes over here. In other words, just do one side one way and one side another and, and I think it's just a beautiful blouse. I'm so pleased with how it turned out because I knew there would be a lot going on. I wanted to stop and so I put the stripe again or the, the I used the stripe for the facing and then I used a little bit of stripe for the collar so you can see it comes out here about the same place love it just just love this blouse and on it's really beautiful what I wanted to show you though again on this sleeve I wanted to do a little bit something and this is another sleeve that I've seen a lot of and I just really like it. and I'll show you how I did this you can see that when you have the sleeve on there's little there's I did three little peekaboos okay so when you have it on it just because it's a knit it just slightly separates on your arm just really nice very very nice now it's real easy um, especially when you're dealing with something like this you don't really have to worry about any of these matching because they're not matching even on the print so it's not like you have to line anything up so when I did this um, I took the sleeve and I folded it in half and I cut this out with a seam allowance along this portion right there so you're gonna cut four of these you need two for each side but just fold it in half and it's just like cutting one sl two sleeves you're just gonna cut two together I put them right next to each other very easy to do so I'm gonna give you these numbers I actually copied this sleeve because my question was certain peekaboos look better than other peekaboos obviously you could do them as much as you want if you do them too much they'll gap open they gape and so I, I know you don't want that but I what I did is I came down three inches my first peekaboo is four inches then I left a little space of three inches. My next peekaboo is three inches. I left a little gap of two inches. My last peekaboo is just an inch, two inches, I'm sorry, and then my hem. Now, I did not do the whole entire sleeve. I didn't do the whole entire sleeve. I only did like a three-quarter sleeve because I really wanted it to have kind of a summer feel. But I'm telling you, I just really like this blouse. I put it on and it's so much fun it's so much fun to have just a gorgeous little blouse the buttons I was trying to mirror image the whole geometric kind of type look 
and yet again I love the combination of the geometric and the gathers so you know clothing is art I think it's really fun to create art and really have logic and reason as to why we're doing something and what we're doing it for and the whole concept around it and and so I'm hopeful as I see garments that I like it, with my experience and as I teach you why I like them or what I'm looking for that you'll start to look at those details that's why I've gone and met the Craig Taylors so that I could understand kinda of how they think I don't begin to pretend that I know how they think but I, it, I always like to try to tap into their insight or their viewpoint or whatever it is okay um, then I want to show you this version this is just a traditional version I actually had this blouse on yesterday um, but I've washed it so. but I wanted to show you because this is a linear striped fabric this is our um, um, Zenia thank you this is our Zenia white on white tone and what I love about this is and actually Kelsey a customer did this a while ago I had not done this blouse in a stripe because I just for some reason could not see it in a stripe I like geometrics but I just couldn't see it in a stripe and what happens when it's on a stripe is this whole thing is is bias up here but just the way it rolls into the collar it lines up exactly to the collar and the facing I mean it's just really really beautiful so this all comes this is a little embroidery that I did on it a little tone on tone embroidery but I would really challenge you if you like the blouse and if you've made it a couple different ways I would absolutely do it in a stripe it's it's just striking is that the right word <laughs> no pun intended except I think I did okay I want to go back just a minute on Craig's blouse and then we'll leave it when you are fitting Craig's blouse there's just not a lot of fitting to it this is a great little blouse um, to if you're worried about fit this is a great little blouse to start with because these gathers are all your darts and if you're not certain about a cup size go larger because there's additional gathers in each of these so this part of the armhole lays really nice and flat you're not it's not going to cause you a problem check the angle of the armhole ch you know change that if you need to and then watch for a sway back those are the only adjustments that I've seen on this again we've got your um, we've got your finished garment measurements on that pattern if you're worried about circumference you know always err to the side of caution but also do a knit a knit works really well um, let's see the three I've got five of them here three of them are knit so it, it just because it's a woven pattern doesn't mean you have to do it in a woven okay okay so we're gonna put Craig's blouse to bed for right now and again any questions on that all right so I want to talk about specialty fabrics because again I just buy them and I just go crazy on them and the reason I continue to do it is I think they really produce the most beautiful garments out there um, and yet many times you say oh where do you get the fabric where do you get the fabric I'm gonna show you some great fabrics but I'm also gonna show you how you can kinda of create your own great fabrics you really can especially designers are doing it a lot today they're adding on they're combining different fabrics together there's a lot of that going on they're adding on ribbons they're adding on trims to make them look like they're border prints or whatever but they're not they're just simply not alright so go back to my first this was one of the first um, weird wild whatever you want to call it prints that I bought absolutely fell in love with this print it's on the cover of one of our patterns um, I just still to this day love this abstract weird thing when you are picking up a, a fabric that the fabric is so um, non-symmetrical you really want to focus on what's going to be the best pattern to bring it out at that time that I bought this fabric I did not have a lot of patterns and so I put it in the classic blouse I would not have I wouldn't put it in the classic blouse today it's too free and flowing to go into a classic blouse even though today I still love the blouse don't get me wrong but I I think that it's a little bit too confine, confining for such a beautiful flowing fabric alright so I'm gonna put that away um, I want to show you a fabric that I picked up a little while ago and this is a um, designer piece that I picked up in New York it's a knit and it's also a panel and so what you can see is and, and 
you know, we've had many debates of which way is up and which way is down. I think this way is up. It's just one beautiful large feather in the middle of yardage. So whatever I make with this, and I already know what I'm going to do, I would make sure that feather was the focus going down the side. Wherever it was going to be, it, it would be important if you're going to utilize this fabric to its best potential to use it uh, in one piece and use the whole length of it. Okay, so I want to first talk about border prints in general, border prints, not specialty prints. The, the only reason I differentiate them is to me border prints run along the bottom. Specialty prints are more like panel prints, so that's kind of how I differentiate them. Border prints, um, there's many times in using border prints. This is a good example. Many of you remember this. We had this fabric last summer. This is a border print, and so some of you get locked into that if I have a border print, the bottom's got to be completely square, and that's just not true. I'm going to go back just before this, and I'm going to pick up this skirt. Now, this skirt was was again one of a garment I made years ago and I'm just still so in love with this fabric I can't part with it. This is a, a silk linen and this is embroidered beading that goes all the way around this and I'm sure we've seen this from time to time but I just fell in love with it. So I actually created a pattern. Pattern number 2050 is the wrap skirt and I actually created a pattern for the garment. Now, the, I had used the pattern years and years ago, but I brought it into the line because I felt like if we bought a border print, sometimes it's hard to kind of cut and then line up that border again. So this pattern, 2050, the wrap skirt, is continuous all the way around. There are no side seams. The top is fitted through um, the side darts and the darts in the front and all around the body. That's how the garment is fitted. So when I was doing this, um, I wanted to make sure that especially with this because it would be difficult to sew through the wood. Um, I left it all one piece and then I just did the little wood buttons here at the top and that's the skirt. Okay, so that bottom of that skirt is straight. There is no curve, there is no, um, you know, how the panel kind of goes up a lot of times. But in a lot of skirts, especially if they're full skirts, the panel itself isn't straight across. It's actually curved at the top and curved at the bottom. And so a lot of you, I get many emails that say, how can I do that? I don't understand. The border print doesn't have to actually exactly match, and it still looks like a border print. So you can see that that's off by, a, oh, maybe an inch here and an inch at the bottom, and each panel is a little bit different. But when I hold the skirt up, it still looks like a border print across the bottom. So, and I know that's black. That's not a good example. I'll show you here another example. This is the same way. This is a border print that all of these little pieces right here are actually sewn together. And I mean, I try to piece them like that, but it's, you know, you're not going to get it 100% right, but it doesn't. It looks like it's almost one continuous piece all the way around, and yet there's a seam here, there's a seam here, there's a seam here. There, there's a lot of seams down at the bottom, So, and the bottom of that skirt is flare. So don't think just because a border print is square at the bottom that I've got to have a square bottom to line it up. The bottom can still be curved and I can still get a beautiful end result out of there without anyone, you know, seeing that that one is maybe be a quarter of an inch off. And I, I say it all the time, if someone's looking this close, you either need to slap them because it's none of their business or you should kiss them because then they won't look at your skirt anymore. How's that? All right, so those border prints, it's a straight border print versus a little bit of a curved edge. When we're dealing with specialty fabrics, I, I put stripe in as a specialty fabric. Stripes are really fun to diag put them on a diagonal. Front, back, when you're going to do the side panel, don't even worry about matching them. Just come in with a color blocking idea and use a solid there. Um, this skirt here is Nick and Zoe. It's pattern number 2913. Nick and Zoe's best-selling skirt. All right. When I get into fabric, I mean, there's so many great fabrics out there today that are double-sided. One color on one side, one color on another. I want to look for a pattern that really accentuates those two different sides. Um, because 
everyone should experience how beautiful that fabric is and if I use one side then I leave out the other side so I would just recommend to you this is a fabric I found years ago where it's literally gray on it's just a knit but it's gray on one side black on the other so it almost looks like wow how did you do that now that's going with great fabric but you could do the exact same thing if you just simply took two colors of fabric literally sewed them as one and you could come up with the gray showing on this side and the black showing on that side and you'd never know they were two layers because you could simply just pin them together and just sew those fabrics as one all right here's another example of a border print where it's not exactly straight across the bottom and yet you still get the look all right all right so this is now a little bit of a specialty print we just got this fabric in now we had this fabric in a little bit last year except we had different colors so this is I don't know how it came in or what happened but I was in New York saw it grabbed it because we sold out of all of it last year and I absolutely loved it and we just couldn't get enough now the colors on this I like even better than anything I've ever seen so I'm gonna end up making something else the colors it's online you can see it it's like a a smoky blue a gray a taupe a brown or is that a black maybe like a black and a white really nice array of colors so I want to show you that but then I also want to show you what what we did with it or remind you what we did with it last year this is whoops I was supposed to be really careful to put those on certain sides of that wire and I didn't um, this is Vince's Vince's dress and so it's really fun to take and place these pieces exactly where you want them to be and then that rest of that dress can just be the stripes so you can work those stripes however you want and I think again it makes the dress so much more outstanding simply because that print was placed so well whenever you're doing this you know it's hard to know how much fabric because you are cutting it cutting it you know a little differently than the pattern as a general rule get what the pattern says um, and then you might just get an extra yard In most cases the same amount of yardage will work in most cases the same amount of yardage will work in this I used two panels and it came out without any problem I didn't need any more I got it all done some of my decisions about the sleeves were based on what panels I had left so if you get real picky you'll have to get another panel but I still did this with two panels um, even though I was playing around and, and again most of the time when you're doing this you have to cut single layer but that single layer is, um, you know, goes pretty fast. This is pattern number 211. Notice the stripes on the front of the collar. And then I was able to use the back to create just a really fun, you know, to really show off the fabric and really do what the fabric does best, which is display that border print. Okay, and then again, because I didn't want to use any more panels than what I, the pattern said, it said two panels or two yards. And so one sleeve has the little motif on it and one sleeve doesn't. And that's, I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, I think a lot of times we find fabrics and they are really, um, I don't know, they're just beautiful. And I think they're so beautiful, to me it's hard to cut them up. You know, this fabric just, it's so beautiful in and of itself that I want to pick a pattern that just really doesn't disturb it or doesn't um, simply does what it should do which is show off the beauty of the fabric and when we're doing that we just want to follow our, our normal rules which would be generally darker colors at the bottom lighter colors on top if I had switched this around and put the dark at the top it would have really given it quite a bit different look and obviously it's your clothes but that's just a general something that I would suggest to you when you're dealing with a print and when it is a um, um, when it's an when it's a print that like this again where you know it's such a beautiful fabric that I think if you cut it up and sewed it back together it would still be beautiful but nobody would really appreciate that this was actually the print itself it wasn't I mean it was all mixed as opposed to just being straight and you cut it up but what I would recommend when you do something like this is to stop it with a collar or a solid or something so that it complements the colors and yet at the same time it stops the busyness. Sometimes if you don't have something to stop the busyness then the eye just keeps going and 
doesn't ever stop. Border prints, just an example. Some of these are just ideas I wanted to show you. And you guys have seen a lot of these fabrics because we've had a lot of these fabrics. Then I want to talk about if we could, well, let me show you a couple more. And the sweater set matches and the sweater set's the same thing. But just rich, beautiful fabrics. But I would just really encourage you not to shy away from border prints. They just, again, I think they bring us the most beautiful fabrics we can have. If we don't want to do a dress, if we're more into separate dressing, then a lot of times what I do is take the width of the border and I'll make a skirt at the bottom and then do a solid tank at the top. So then I can wear just a little jacket over them. Looks like a dress and yet I can still function ha as having two separate pieces. So most of the time that we have a border print and we want to use the length of the border print, use it, but it doesn't mean it has to necessarily be in one piece. I can break it up. All right. And we have to go really all the way far back because I had to just bring out this. This is a border print we made years ago. We actually made the fabric. It was a dual border. It actually met in the middle and then the border went to both sides. It was just a beautiful piece of fabric. All right. So I want to talk about a little bit using two different fabrics to create um, a coordinated look. Definitely not a border print so much, but a more of a specialty look. Now this blouse you kind of have to look at for a little while but it's two different fabrics two different black and whites when you do that you want to make sure you've got the same tones and the same colors but the facing and the collar I'm sorry the, f the, the blouse body and the collar are the same fabric and then the facing and the back are a different fabric so I've just taken two fabrics I like them both and a lot of times when you're shopping for fabrics you see them and you say oh I love those fabrics but I don't need two but yes you do so buy less of them and put them into one garment and again the sleeves so that when you look at the front it looks like almost the same fabric this just looks like a little bit of difference here and yet when you turn it to the back you see that there's it's it's actually a different print but again same colors so that's a great way to combine fabrics together um, I want to talk about this dress back here for a little bit oh this I just wanted to show you because this was um, the same print, it's the same one as this, except it's a lighter color, and it's again a panel. So I could put bias over here, it's, it's a knit, it doesn't really have a bias, but you can really switch it up. And you can mix it with solid colors, solid woven, solid stretch wovens. This right here, just an, one more example of a panel. I think a lot of times when we have a print, we have a tendency, or, or a panel in particular, we want to put it on the front somewhere and the front I don't know somehow the front to me doesn't warrant the panel as much as the back the back is larger the back really is kind of sometimes a forgotten place to put a panel in my opinion so I love putting things in the back and then sometimes if we want to just accentuate them we can put just a little bit of it on one piece so what I did is I before I started I measured the size of the panel um, I looked at where it would go, where it would go best. There was two different size panels in this particular fabric, and this is another fabric we've had. It's gone now, but um, there was a smaller one here and a larger one. So the larger piece, obviously the back, the larger one went there, and then the smaller one went to the, the skirt. So in the front, it just has a little skirt at the bottom, and then when you turn around, it's got that beautiful back. It's just really, and like I said, it just makes such a specialty dress that it's really nice to be able to do that. All right, so I want to show you this because this is a great example of making a specialty fabric because we can do it, especially so much of what is being done right now, we can really do it. This is not a border print. It's a created border print. Um, this is the little top we worked with last week. We did the little um, crossover. It's the sweater set base. And this is the tank top. So if I show that to you, you can see that and I'll show you how to do this because this is really stylish right now. So my base is the tank top and I love this dress, just love this dress. This is a new fabric we just got in. It's an ITY knit and this is the purple that we've got online. I'm not sure what it's called but it's on there. Okay, so I took the tank top and many times before 
I have made tank dresses. You guys know I've done webcasts on them and you guys know how to do that. You just add whatever length you need to and make sure that you have the width. So I went ahead literally front and back only because I wanted to make it sleeveless. I wanted a little something to go over it. Um, and so I just literally added the length I needed and cut the whole dress just as it was. Okay, then when I did that, and I really did it this way because I think it's the easiest way for you all to do it. I, I really do. Once I had done that, now when I did that, I cut just a little extra. In fact, I cut 3 eighths inch extra all the way down the side. 3 eighths inch, and the reason it was is because I was adding in a seam allowance. Now you could go ahead and actually make the pattern, I just didn't want to. Okay, <laughs> okay so if you can see here what I did then is I measured in I did four inches. I measured in four inches and I did this to both the back and the front. I literally just cut a strip right off the side of the dress. All the way up the side. Now you only got two pieces. You've only got the front and the back and they're double layer still. They're still folded in half. You've cut them out. So you're doing both sides at one time. And so what I did is I literally cut this out off the dress. Then what I did is I laid this down out of my new fabric and I cut, I used this as my pattern and I cut the piece out of this wild whatever fabric it is, okay? It's called black lightning online. Now what I did differently though is I added two seam allowances on the inside not two seam allowance, I'm sorry, one seam allowance. I added three-eighths of an inch because this, if I didn't, if I sewed it back together, it would be smaller. Remember I added a seam allowance over here. I added one seam allowance here. So I added a seam allowance all the way down. That piece is done. It's ready to go. Okay, so now when I sew it back together, it'll be the exact same size of what I had before. I mean, if you wanted to, you could actually create the pattern, cut the pattern, add the seam allowance. You could do all of that. This is just a really quick way. The garment didn't take me two hours to create the whole thing. So it's very, very fast. Okay, so remember I had cut off the side and I placed it on here and I um, used it as a pattern for my new one. I did that both sides. Then I had the middle piece. And the middle piece, I knew how long I wanted it to be from other tank tops I had done. I literally cut five inches off the bottom. And again, that five inches I cut off the bottom is right here. It's right here, so maybe it's not here. <laughs> I threw the, I put these scraps here because I really wanted to show them to you. I thought they'd kind of help you. I don't have it here, but anyway, doesn't matter. Let's just say those are my five inches, five inches in width. So I cut it off and I used this as my pattern to cut again the black and white. The only thing I did different is I added two seam allowances up here and that's so that when I sewed them back together they would again equal the side and exactly match. That's it. I just folded my pieces up. I sewed the, the bottom has to be created first so you sew this to this first then you sew the long seam. Then you sew the same to the back and it's just a tank top and it's quick and it's easy and I think it is just cute as can be. You already know it fits. So when I put on my little top, I have this great little dress and it's fabulous. It's got all of my specialty fabric that I've made. It is slimming as can be because I've got all those vertical lines going down the side. Remember black and white and another color. So that's why I picked the purple. You could have done black and white and just black. I at first thought I was going to use black pontaroma in the front, and then I thought, no, I want to zip it up a little bit. So that's why I went for the purple. But gosh, you could have done black and white. And any favorite pont this is the pontaroma. Any favorite pontaroma you want. Pontaromas and ITY knits, they work really well together. All right, so I'm going past time, so I'll shut up. But anyway, really, there's just so much fun with specialty fabrics. I'm just going to really, hopefully there's lots of ideas here where you'll get the confidence pick the pattern that you've done before so you feel comfortable with the fit so that you can simply splurge a little bit with the fabric and feel comfortable that it will come in where you want it to and it's just fun it really is just a lot of fun so hopefully I'll 
pass that enthusiasm on to you because I sure had a good time and plus I've got a lot of beautiful outfits to um, to take with me okay so it's nine or it's whatever time it is but our time is up um, and we've got a, any questions can we answer any questions okay let's take a few minutes we'll answer questions we ran short last week so we'll go just a little over this week I did go down a size with knits yes on my tank top it is that our pattern is 500 for a pat for our tank top so pattern 500 because it's a woven I go down a size when I go to use a knit yes yes on the sweater set I have a problem with the top with the top showing above the sweater should I cut the top neckline a little bit lower yes yes what's wrong the top the strap doesn't cover the bra line on the tank yeah it's actually really easy let me show you um, here's a tank so let's just say that this is the way the tank fits the body and your strap is coming right here just take your French curve and pivot it in like this if it goes like this just pivot it in to where it comes up closer and then take your armhole and pivot it that way so in other words you're kind of moving the strap over but you're not physically moving it over you're just literally drawing the neck narrower and you're drawing the armhole to be wider now and I say this if you want to just keep that strap the strap as it is is about an inch and a half wide if you don't mind it being wider take the French curve and just pivot it like that and don't change the armhole but if you still want to keep it the same bring the neckline in bring the armhole over and then it will just simply move it over okay the red and black this this is pattern number 500 this is the tank top and so it's the same dress those two are the same and this is pattern number 211 this is called Nina's top okay bonus question are you guys ready oh I forgot I, forgot. <laughs> I was supposed to do something early in the webcast and I s forgot <laughs> okay sorry okay so they're gonna type it in the chat box and this is you know the reason we do this is a bonus for those people who watch us live that's it I mean don't I've gotten a couple complaints that you know we should do a bonus for everybody but we just do a bonus if you're watching live to encourage you to watch it live that's all um, so if you're watching live those of you who are watching live get access to this question so we always put it in the chat box because I our talking is sometimes a little delayed but the chat box is instantaneous so be sure you read the question in the chat box answer as fast as you can because it's worth fifty dollars those who get it get a fifty dollar gift certificate and you can use it on anything at silhouettepatterns.com and I'll ask the question here in a little bit but upcoming we've got workshops coming up you guys get into something this summer we just have so much fun one day three days whatever they are get into them if you're on the edge grab a girlfriend grab a husband don't grab anybody grab a sewing machine and come to one of these workshops you just you get so far ahead in that short period of time really it's uh, it's incredible go to Facebook we've had some postings from some of the ladies in Facebook um, so that you can see what's going on we've got lots of pictures lots of inspiration of what's going on all right do we have a winner we have a winner we don't have a winner oh, we don't have a winner question what 3d puzzle invented 40 years ago became the best-selling toy ever what 3d puzzle invented 40 years ago became the best-selling toy ever we have a winner very good and the reason we did this was because patterns are a math they're not as difficult as this math but it's all based off a math system and the more you recognize that on patterns anyway one and one is two you won't say oh there's a million ways to do this no there's not there's flat pattern making and drape I didn't make these methods up they're not my methods but I learned them long time ago and I'm really glad I did and I'm helping you guys learn them now and you're doing great you're really doing great what was the answer Rubik's Cube Rubik's Cube what 3D puzzle 
Today is the 40th anniversary of Rubik's Cube. And that child of mine sitting over there is a master at it. <laughs> I have yet to ever be able to do it, but boy, I'll tell you something. <laughs> he is really good. So hook up with somebody you know and there's a mathematical formula that maybe they'll teach you. All right, so we're going to see you in two weeks. Um, in two weeks, we're going to talk about capris. It's summertime. It's getting summertime. Summer's warm. Our pattern of the month for May is the Craig's blouse. That's the one we just went over. But for June, it's 3009. It is called our capri pant. I don't remember the name. But anyway, <laughs> it's our capri pant. And so next time, I want to focus on fitting. So if you will, for the next two weeks, email me your questions that you want covered on capris on any of this stuff. We're going to answer all the questions and we're going to get you all excited. They're wonderful to wear for summer. They really are. They're nice looking. Um, we've got a couple different ways we're going to do them, but it's all good. All right. So we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks so much for being here, ladies. We really appreciate it. Bye.